Let me pull up this, uh, this next story. We got this tweet from Daniel Turner. He says, the elite flocked to Davos this week on their private jets to lecture us average folk on why we must give up our gas-powered cars by an imaginary deadline in order to save the planet. And in the meantime, Wyoming lawmakers propose ban on electric vehicle sales. Well, well, that, well that's something new, I guess. What, what is it? What? Wyoming wants to ban electric cars. A group of GOP Wyoming state lawmakers want to end electric vehicle sales by 2035, saying the move will help safeguard the oil and gas industries. So I'm sure most of y'all have heard California, Oregon, and Washington are moving to ban gas cars. I think California already did. It goes into effect 2035. Now Wyoming is doing the opposite. Could you imagine you're in Oregon and you're like, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna drive, uh, I'm gonna drive east. And then you get into Wyoming and you're in your electric car because you don't have any gas cars and there's no electric charging stations. And you're just like, well, what do I do? Or you're in Wyoming and you're like, I'm gonna go visit the coast. You drive through, you take your gas car, you drive in Oregon, no gas stations. Yeah, this is, uh, author when you're an authoritarian, like what California is doing is an authoritarian act. It's government getting in the way of a private market, demanding that you transition to a certain thing by a certain time. What happens is, the other side can play the same game. I'm against it. Libertarians have the right idea. Let the free market go. But wait, 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 Tim. We have freedom of movement in the future. Wait, that's, not, <laughs> that's not supposed to happen. People have their own cars. That's not supposed to happen. We're supposed to rent cars and share them and borrow them, just like all the companies that have World Economic Forum board members that are heavily invested in them. We're not supposed to be using cars and having private property. That's not a part of the UN 2030 vision and not a part of the vision that Klaus Schwab was talking about years ago when he was talking about uh, pretty much making sure that people cannot and will not be owning cars. A lot of major cities are also making it very difficult to drive cars. New York City is one of them. They set up uh, surveillance cameras everywhere. There's nearly 15,000 surveillance cameras all throughout New York City. Speed cameras everywhere. You go over 25 miles an hour, you get a ticket right away, billed to you. There's a lot of people obfuscating their license plate in New York City because obviously, you know, people people make mistakes. It happens. 25 is, is, is not a very high speed. It's a very low speed. People make a lot of mistakes. People are being indebted. There's no parking spots. Every street is being closed down. So you can't even drive down there, uh, drive down uh, most streets. So so we are seeing this uh, 2030 UN Klaus Schwab World Economic Forum vision be implemented very slowly, but it's already happening in New York City. It's already going to be happening in California where they're banning not just uh, electric car, not just, sorry, uh, gas cars, diesel cars, uh, lawnmowers, um, even golf carts are now being banned in California, which again is, is just absolutely Absolutely insane and crazy and going towards the vision of what Klaus Schwab wants for you and not for what anyone else really wants. Well, look, I, I, I can sympathize with Klaus Schwab. because I'm, I'm, you know, just imagine you're sitting there, you know, you're you're in your yacht hanging out with all your rich buddies. And then you look off in the distance and there's there's some middle class dude and he's drinking a soda. And you're like, what makes him think he's entitled to the same drinks that I am? And you just desperately want to take from him everything he owns and then just put him into indentured servitude. I can totally understand why they're, why they're mad, right? Mm -hmm. Or just, you know, just totally wipe them off the planet because there's too many people in this world. <laughs> That's also another thing that they're also openly calling for. Right. But, it, but but making them super poor uh, is is a way of helping, you know, uh, make, make that process go a lot faster. So so these people are, are not just eugenicists. They're also utter freaking hypocrites. There's an estimated 1,100 private jets at Davos this year. They quadrupled their private jet emissions last year than the previous year before that. So uh, these are individuals who obviously live by a different set of rules, don't care about the environment, don't give a damn about it. This is just their PR words that they're using to, of course, justify their larger takeover of society, which is exactly the hostile takeover that we're going through right now. All right, then he's not on the boat watching the guy drink a Coke. He's looking out his window and seeing human beings in general. Is that, he's, just, he's just mad they're there. Or they're, he's just flying on the private jet being like, there's too much open land here. We, we need to, <laughs> we, you know. Seamus and I uh, came up with a bit a while ago about Bill Gates that we never got around to making because we, we could put it on YouTube. It was basically a gag about how like Bill Gates is his day and it's like he's driving down the street and he like, he pulls into a McDonald's and then he's like, oh, I'll have the Big Mac with a large fry and don't forget the ketchup. And then when he pulls up the drive through, they hand him the bag and he looks and he goes, there's no ketchup. And so it's like a series of things throughout the day where he's, he gets minor inconveniences, but like 
once he he's really angry, the woman knocks on the window. And she's like, oh, forgot your ketchup, and then gives him more. And then he has an app on his phone. We can't talk about it on YouTube, but it activates a certain thing in people that wipes out humanity. Oh. And so he's like sitting there staring at his phone, like ready to press the button. And then she's like, wait, don't forget the ketchup. And then he's like, oh, oh, thank you. And then he keeps doing it. Just like the general idea is that these people's real anger is not centered in anything logical. It's centered in just like their their emotions related to other people. Like they just don't like other people. So they make up reasons to justify why there should be less people. And then common people cheer them on. I, I said I kind of made my own definition of woke because I actually think this is a part of wokeism. And I said, woke is the act of allowing an authority outside of God to define your morality. And what the, the way they're able to get people to cheer this nonsense on is the climate gods or their woke or whatever the climate, whatever you want to make it. And you're you're cheering on your own demise. That's how powerful I think this religion is. Yeah, it's amazing. It's like uh, when Disney did the Lemmings documentary. You got you know the story of that. No, Appar like so they made this documentary and the Lemmings all walk off the cliff, mm -hmm. and then everyone believes Lemmings commit ritualistic suicide. They don't. Apparently, what they were doing was they had like push brooms and stuff, and they were like shoving the animals off the cliff and beating them, and so they were fleeing to their oh. death. And then they were like, "Now film it and claim it happened." That's what it feels like a lot with this uh, World Economic Forum stuff. They're destroying your life taking away everything from you, locking things down. Then when you're miserable, they say, are you miserable? It's yeah. because of climate change. Yeah. I, I mean, all these people are having heart attacks because of climate change. Yeah, yeah. suddenly. Very, suddenly, dying suddenly from climate change, you yeah. know? And so, well, we got, you gotta do something about it. Yeah, I think it's uh, for, you know, talking about it for common people, I think, uh, don't be alarmed. I think we will make it through this. Uh, it might not be the same future you look at a generation from now, 20 years from now. We might all have Neuralinks two or well, one or two d generations from now. Life's going to be fine. People are still going to have friends. You might be controlled by a central being or a government, but I think humans are survivors and life will be different. But in, in the end, uh, it will look dystopian to us. Could you imagine somebody from like the 18th century looking at what we're doing right now? they would be blown out of their minds. And I think it would be the same type of thing generations I, from now. I think if you took someone from like 1850 in any capacity and transported them here, the first thing they would do was go on, would go on a violent rampage thinking that it was all Satanists and demons and stuff. And that's what we're, that's where we, we are now kind of, right? We're looking at this stuff. I said it's an anti-God movement. I'm still against it. I'm going to speak out against it. Don't get me wrong. But I think we're kind of in that same place. I think the future is going to be AI. Doing it. I like people will eventually cease to exist in some capacity and ever, like we're already integrating ourselves into the network with with Twitter and with these apps and everything and Elon buys Twitter surprise mm -hmm. surprise it's a massive neural net he also is running Neuralink you combine these two things I mean I think Elon bought Elon bought Twitter because he wants to build a neural net he wants to connect people's brains to it and Twitter is already the base component of people injecting their thoughts into a machine Next, you just need to hook it to people's brains. It's there. Yeah. yeah. I, I, one of the clips that I also just saw recently was Elon Musk a couple of years ago saying, hey, we need, to, we need to have a serious conversation about the development of artificial intelligence here. We need to seriously have some real regulations here. We need to stop doing what we're doing. And he's like, no one's listening. And this is just continuing. So uh, there's going to be a lot of implications because of this. And a lot of the most powerful, most sinister people are at the head, head of these larger technological advancements. There's a reason Klaus Schwab is calling for the fourth industrial revolution. And when he's calling for that, he's calling for, of course, using technology for his own personal benefit, screwing everyone else over. And with the advancements, I mean, we're seeing the possibility of human beings living forever. And for a certain group of people to live forever, there's going to be a lot of other people that are not going to be living forever or won't be living at all. And well, we have to understand that there's this larger trade-off that is uh, being talked about very seriously right now at the World Economic Forum. To be fair, though, I mean, think about it. If they invented the immortality pill right now, and maybe they already did, could they just give it to every single person? Well, what, they're going to say... How, what would they... What, what, how, would, how, would, how, would, how, would, how would you guys deal with that? Right now, let's say... Some alien came to you and said, here's a bottle of pills, easily replicable, and it will make anyone who ingests the pill one time biologically immortal. Like you can still be hit by a car, but you mm -hmm. won't age to death. 
would you just be like, okay, everyone can have it? I would spread it, yeah. Yeah, I'd want everyone to have it. I mean, what you would see is centralized power obviously trying to control it and not let everybody have it, I think. But like all the woke people getting it and all the, yeah. the zombies and everything? I'm very much, you know, I'm against the wokeism, but I will support your right to be woke. Yeah. So, But I, I think the challenge is there are some people that, there are some people who believe in hard work, personal responsibility, individual liberty, freedom, et cetera. And there are some people who think they're entitled to everything and could, should take from you even by force. And so it's like, if I'm faced with being like, should I give the immortality pill to the hardworking, freedom-loving individualist or the woke authoritarian psychopaths with guns? I probably wouldn't. I'd probably just be like, man, that's a tough call, isn't it? Because look, we're not talking about killing anybody. No, We're talking about granting them you know extended or eternal life so it takes extended the question would be would you give purified clean water to all those people the people you hate as well people you disagree with your enemies would you if you had the opportunity to give everyone no. access to clean water you wouldn't yeah I, I don't think it's that simple i think if we're looking at say like china right now and what they're doing to the uyghurs in those camps and i'm supposed to be okay with being like i'm going to overlook all that evil stuff you're doing is give you some really nice things to help you no, I think the opposite is true. I think maybe at the very least you can be like, look, if I've got something you want, you got to stop torturing and raping those women. If you agree to that, maybe we'll talk. But I'm not just going to give you whatever. You know what I mean? I think some tech is, it, it, it belongs to all of us if we, can, if we can make that happen. Yeah, but an individual like Jared Kushner, who, again, very powerful and is already making statements about possibly living forever you think he's going to be sharing that with the yemenis that he of course brokered a, a deal with the saudi arabians that he's bombing uh like do you think he's going to be doing any of that i don't i don't think that's so. a tough question man it it's is like, a very I, tough I, question because it's also a, an ethical question it's also a question about our existence here and it kind of changes it and and it changes also our relationship with god as well so there's a lot of deeper philosophical implications here that i think are worth debating and talking about on a longer bigger perspective that's why i don't have an answer for it to well let, let me you. let me ask the audience but, uh, uh, my first knee-jerk reaction is no if Absolutely not. You wouldn't share with everybody? I, I, I wouldn't want it to exist. But the problem is it, is, it is like exist. A, like a gun. And will the powerful people use it to, of course, control humanity? But again, that also makes you less human, though. You, you take away people's humanity at the same time. So you're also a part of their problem. So th there's a larger conundrum here. That uh, Yeah, maybe, maybe, that, maybe that's a, a, the gun thing is probably the better analogy, I suppose. People have a right to live. Maybe if... You don't have to give it to them. Like, we don't just go around yeah. handing people guns. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But access to it should be made available to those who want it. Yeah. Let I, me know what you guys think in the, in the comments. Put a one if you don't think everyone is deserving of immortality. Put a two if you think everyone should just be given no matter what, no matter their political opinions. Yeah, if the founding fathers were writing the Constitution today, I could see them putting that in as uh, you have the right to. I mean, I wouldn't you know, want to extension. live forever, right? I well, mean, that the, takes away from my human experience the here. Nice it takes away from all the beautiful moments that I have here. I don't want that. The main thing is it makes you not age, so you could always kill yourself, but y you just won't, it won't be taken from you, I think is the idea, except for these tragic accidents. They're going to be, mm -hmm. that's the problem too, is if people think they can live forever, if they're safe, they're going to become obsessive with keeping their surroundings safe and, and soft. Bill Gates would lose his ish if everyone got yeah. a pill to live forever. <laughs> Bill Gates would be, ah, he would freak out right now and, and then start to doubling and tripling down on all, all of his efforts that he's already tripling and doubling but down this, on this, right this now. This is what I think is a large component of it. There was uh, like 10, 10 uh, no, this is 12 years ago, I saw Aubrey de Grey speak in California. You know, yeah. Aubrey de Grey. He's Long a, hair, dude. Yeah, he's a senescence, senescence researcher. And he said that, what did he say? I'll, I'll paraphrase it, it's been a decade. That's, he, he, this is 10, 12 years ago, someone who is 45 today will live to be 1,000 years old. That's what he said. Not because we're going to invent a pill in, in the next 30 years that will make you live for 1,000 years, but because every year we develop new medical advancements and our medical advancements progress faster than a person ages. So for instance, someone's 45. In 10 years, they start getting you know, bad you know, uh, arteries or whatever. Well, in the 10 years time, we've already figured out a cure for that. 10 years later, he's got macular degeneration. It's hearing, we've already got a cure for that. It's been 20 years. Now he's 100 years old and it's like, you know, and, and he's got joint pains. Right, don't worry, we've already figured out how to restore collagen. And so it's just gonna keep happening. I actually think looking at stem cells and stem cell therapy, yo, that stuff's scary crazy. We, we, we talked about this on one of the members only segments. 
you can actually get stem cells taken from the umbilical cord or from your own skin or fat. They don't even gotta take it from babies. That was a big concern back in the day. It was like mm -hmm. they're taking, you know, from aborted babies and stuff. Not even, they can take from your own skin or fat, your own stem cells, multiply them, inject them into your body. The stem cells will seek out damaged tissues and restore them full. Doesn't that, when I saw that, we watched this video about it, it freaked me out because I'm like, uh, won't that just make you like immortal? Because if, if you're given fresh, so cells have a certain number of divisions as the telomeres break down, if, if our understanding of science is correct, if they're giving you a fresh, fully young baby cell that bonds, would it not just have perfect, complete, you know, DNA that could replicate or whatever? Sounds too good yeah. to be true. There well, there's already there's already elites getting uh, blood from young people and athletes. Um, Bro, just just stem cell therapy is eight thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. You call you call the company and say you want stem cells and exosomes, fifteen thousand dollars, and they come. Uh, I, I bet that's what Joe Biden's getting. It's on its way to being like eighty bucks, but that's the question. Do do the people that own the world or that are trying to run the business of the world do they want? 100, 300, you know, 7 billion people to live for another 6,000 years so that they well, can have 800 <sighs> children each. And then we've got 900 billion people on earth. Like, no, I don't no. think. That would start wars because you're fighting over resources at that point. And cannibalism, because then at that point, yeah. human bodies are just mobile mm -hmm. food sources. Yeah. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.